NASH um, is an abbreviation for non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. I'm just going to break that down for you. I'm going to start at the end and talking about steatohepatitis and start from the very back. So a hepatitis, the itis, means inflammation and hepa is an old word for the liver. So hepatitis is inflammation of the liver. Most people when they hear hepatitis will think of things like chronic hepatitis C or chronic hepatitis B, which are viral infections. But other things can cause inflammation in the liver. Alcohol can do it, but also fat buildup. And so the steato part, steato refers to fat. So steatohepatitis is a fatty hepatitis. Now there's a number of different things which can cause steatohepatitis, but the list's smaller. So alcohol is an important cause of steatohepatitis and also um, uh, the steatohepatitis that occurs in association with diabetes and being overweight. So the steatohepatitis in the second category is called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis because alcohol is not contributing to that fatty liver disease, other factors are. Your liver is very important and you can't actually live without a liver. So you need a liver to keep you healthy. Um, it does a whole range of things. It's quite wonderful what it can do. Uh, one of its main jobs is to look after our nutrition. So when we eat, the food gets digested in our intestines. It then gets absorbed into the bloodstream and there's a special vein which comes from the gut, goes into the liver to take that food with all the nutrients in it to the liver. And then the liver looks after the processing of the sugars, the amino acids, which are the building blocks for the protein and fats as well. So liver disease is quite common um, in the Australian community. There's about 5.5 million Australians who are actually living with uh, liver disease. The most common form is um, fatty liver disease and that probably affects somewhere between 25% and 30% of the adult Australian population. So um, fatty liver disease affects a lot of um, Australians. Most of them aren't going to go on to develop serious problems with their liver. So about one in 10 of the people with fatty liver disease will get the more severe form, the NASH, and about a third of those will go on to develop cirrhosis of the liver. So about 1% of Australians. So a number of different things can make the liver become fatty. Uh, the most common in our community relates to things like having diabetes or the increasing number of Australians who are overweight. So um, many years ago when I was finishing my training, we didn't see many patients with fatty liver disease, but there's been increasing awareness amongst doctors about the importance of fatty liver disease, but also we're seeing more people with fatty liver disease as there's an increase in uh, diabetes and uh, uh, overweight in our community. The problem is that there's not many symptoms, but there are some. Um, we get a lot of people referred to our clinics with fatty liver disease, and the sorts of things they get referred with are um, sometimes they have an abnormal blood test. So they may feel fatigued, uh, they may have some other kind of reason for seeing the local doctor and getting a blood test. They have a blood test and it shows that their liver enzymes are raised and then the GP will often refer them to have an ultrasound. When they have an ultrasound, it will show that the liver's fatty and then the, the GP will then refer them to us for further evaluation. Uh, and some people seem to get uh, discomfort uh, around the liver when they've got fatty liver disease. By no means everyone, but there do seem to be some people who get a bit of discomfort. That seems to occur um, because the fat, um, it builds up inside the liver cells. So it's actually inside the liver cells. And when there's enough fat, the liver gets uh, enlarged. So the liver has pain fibers on its surface. And I believe if the liver gets enlarged enough, you get some stretching of those and the liver becomes sensitive and people are aware of that and it can cause um, some discomfort. So those are the most common ways that people would, um, most common symptoms that people would have. So usually no symptoms, but just having some investigations that turn up the fatty liver disease, which is why I think it's important to think about having checkups to see if there could be fatty liver disease. So the numbers are certainly going up and that reflects, I think, the changes um, in our lifestyle. Um, and so potentially it's possible to prevent the, uh, people developing NAFLD, and there's also options for treating it once people have NAFLD. Uh, and the mainstay of doing that is around lifestyle measures. So it's about a healthy lifestyle. So if you come from a family where there's an increased risk of getting fatty liver disease, then adopting some of those lifestyle measures can reduce your risk of going on to develop fatty liver disease. And similarly, if you've got fatty liver disease, the same interventions can potentially be beneficial.